Today, instead of doing a Notion build with me, I decided I'm gonna give you a tour of a page I have inside of my Notion workspace called Collect and Capture HQ. Now, inside of this page, I'm doing a few things. The first thing I'm doing is I'm collecting articles from online. I'm putting them inside of a database in this page. I'm giving them ratings. I'm also collecting articles that I'm yet to read. Another section I have is a library. In this database, I'm collecting book recommendations I find online from influencers, from people on Twitter. I also track reading progress inside of this database. And I have another database for capturing my mood every day and some other stuff as well. So let's just get right into it. First, I wanna just scroll down the whole page to have a good idea of what's going on. Let me give you a little bit of a hook into the video so you don't run away. I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but um, I'm gonna take my time. So scrolling down, this is kind of what it looks like. I have a little widget for weather here. I have a picture. You'll notice that I like the blue and orange aesthetic with the dark mode. I have my library down here. Some articles that I've read from online. I'm grabbing this from the Save to Notion extension. And then I have my book draft, and this is where I'm breaking down a book that I'm writing. So let's start at the very top and look at everything. So at the very top, I have a currently section. This is stuff I'm currently reading or I want to read soon. I have a linked database to my library, the books, and I also have another linked database to articles from the web. So these two things that I'm reading, currently I'm reading The Bell Jar, and I have a little progress slider and the total pages, and the page I'm on is signaling this progress bar. I have a video on this. Honestly, there's probably gonna be a lot of links down below because most of what I'm showing you on this page, I've made videos on. So this is sort of how I'm putting most of these things together. I also have links to genres, and this is in a separate database, but I'll go through that when we get to the library. So I'm currently reading The Bell Jar about 41% of the way done. Some other properties here that uh, let me know more information. This is the book cover. I have that in another property. And I also have just like a little section of the description from Goodreads and a link to Goodreads as well. The next thing down is my article. So this linked database and how it's filtered is just showing me every article I've grabbed from websites that I have not yet read. So uh, there's a filter here that just says status is to consume. I have two separate status options in this database that are to consume and done simply. So things I'm done reading go under done. And these are the things I wanna read. I also have the publication name and the date that I saved it. Coming down from there, I have a little widget, little weather widget from indify.co. I talk about this website all the time on this channel. I just think it's one of the best places to get Notion widgets. And there are toggles for dark and light mode too, which is really cool. And I'll leave a link down to that below. I also have this little image here that is a nice representation, brings everything together, the orange and the blue, which is my theme. I also have a link to my newsletter. I have a link to my newsletter everywhere just to remind myself to write my newsletter because I always forget every week. Um, and then I have my mood. So this is also a link to database to my main mood tracker. And let's actually take a look at how this is set up. So this will be the first database we look at. My mood tracker is something I've been using since the beginning of last year. There was a moment this year where I wanted to change it entirely, but I decided against that. This is such an easy way to capture my mood every day. It doesn't require that much work. You'll see there's just the day of the week, I just type that in. I have the mood, the severity of that mood, and I just have some selection for moods. I have the date, the cause. So this is basically the extent of my daily journaling. Um, so it, I'm not writing a whole lot. I restrict myself to just one short sentence of what happened that day. And then I have a formula that's telling me whether or not my mood was positive or negative. And this is just simple if statements I have, if my mood was happy. Um, I'm looking at all the selections inside of mood and determining if they're positive or negative, basically. I also have another database view in here that is a calendar. And if I were to go and navigate 
to January of 2020 when I started this. Seeing as this is a full width of uh, full view database calendar, I can actually scroll down through the whole year, which is really interesting to look at and just see all the moods I was in through the year. I also did a newsletter about this and I, I transferred all this data. I put it into Google Sheets and made some like pie graphs, which was really fun to make. And now we're down to January, 2021. What I'm doing is I'm linking to that main database and I'm creating a filter called date is within the past week. So simply I can just put in all of my mood from the week that has passed, including today. Then I have my library, which is within a toggle. So if you're wondering how I'm able to get everything within this toggle to be orange, it's because first of all, I put everything within the toggle and I go, to color orange. I could also go to yellow and everything within the toggle will turn yellow. There's a bit of a workaround with this. You'll see that there are columns made within this toggle. Um, and the way to get around that, you can't create columns within a toggle in Notion. An easy way to fix that is to create a new page, maybe called the library, set it up with as many columns as you want, however you want to configure it and then turn that page into a toggle and all of those columns should come with it. And that's just what I did here. So in my library section, I have some recommendations. I have a link here that are recommendations, bookmarks from the web of books I should read. So here I have best of 2020. Really what I did was just Google best books of 2020 and found all of these links. I also have under there my reading goals, and this is just bullet point form of what I want to do this year. So I want to read 200 books this year. So far, that's unreasonable, but I like my ambition. I will also explore a new genre, every other book. Ambitious as well, don't know if that's going to work. I will read at least 15 classics. I think I'll be able to do that. I will read every morning at 7 a.m. Weirdly, so far I've done that. Maybe not like exactly 7 a.m., but every morning and every night at 9 p.m. Sometimes I get around to doing that. I also have another section here that's currently reading. This is identical uh, to how I'm filtering this um, currently reading link database up here, except it's in list view. So I'll be able to see that. I have another bookmark here to a website, Penguin, for more book recommendations. Next, coming down, let's look at my shelf. So this is the main database for my library of books. And this connects to my genres, which is going to be in here. I also have links to all of these genres as well. But let me just click in through here, open it up as a page. Here are some of the database views I have. I have my bookshelf, which is all the books I plan to read and have read. I have another database view for a backlog. These are all the book recommendations that I find that I want to read this year. And some of these properties include the title of the book, the author, and this is in multi-select. I have a Goodreads rating because I ordinarily find these recommendations on Goodreads. So I just plug that in. I also have recommend ticked for every entry that goes in here. And then I have a links and files property to put in the book cover. Also, if I go into gallery, this bookshelf, the way I'm able to see all these book covers is if I go into properties and with card preview, I'm selecting book cover and that's that links and files property. So that is another option to view images through a gallery. So my workflow, I guess you could say, is from these recommendations. If I unclick recommendations, say I want to read Things We Lost in the Fire, I'll just unclick recommend and it will immediately go to my bookshelf. And I'll see it populate here. And then if I want to start reading it, I will plug in how many pages it has. So let's say it has 340 and the page I'm on is 14. Coming back to capture and collect the HQ, you'll see it populate up here in my 
currently section. This is a book I'm now currently reading with 4% progress. If I go back down to the library section, it will also appear up here in currently reading. And again, it will appear in my bookshelf. I have another database view for favorites. And my filter for this is favorite is checked. I do have a property for that. Favorite checked. I also have another property for my rating, which is in the same style as the Goodreads rating. I have 10 to 100%. There's also some hidden properties here. If I want to say um, if it's part of series, what series number, and that recommend is hidden as well. Here's an example of one that's in a series. Mythos, the Greek myths retold by Stephen Fry. This is part of the series, the Great Mythology series. And I also sometimes I'll do uh, book notes if the subject is particularly hard to follow, like Greek mythology. There's a lot of names that are confusing. So that's what I did here in just some simple toggles and I'm highlighting each name. I will say that book notes in Notion, I don't know about it yet. Um, I kind of like the idea of just reading and not writing so many notes when I read. Like I did that a lot last year and I find that it's just, it's not very productive in terms of learning to just constantly be writing notes, it's taking away. It's kind of like assuming that your brain can't make these connections itself, which is wrong. I think if you read enough, you can make natural connections and understand things pretty well. So that's what I'm trying to do more of this year is read more, write less book notes. Unless it's like on a subject I particularly don't understand or is confusing. All right, so the next thing I have here is a section for archive. And the filter I have here is progress contains 100%. So that's that progress bar formula. So we're gonna go into Emma by Jane Austen. I have the progress bar at 100% because the total page is at 208 and the page I'm on is 208. Um, so what I'm doing is basically saying if this property contains the characters 100%, it will go into archive. So I don't have to manually click an archive checkbox for it to go in there. Let's look a little bit more at the anatomy of one of these book pages. I, like I said, have the description at the top from Goodreads. I also have a template button. Um, this one is for an outline if I do want to create some book notes. I can click this button and it will give me an outline in a toggle. If I click down the toggle, it will prompt me to write a summary. And then I have a chapter title toggle here. And if I toggle that down, I have subsection toggle and details within that subsection. I can add a new subsection. I can add a new chapter. So I just keep going down. I also have a link to another book I want to read. And I can kind of navigate through this pretty quickly. The Dutch House, and I have Chaos Making a New Science. And I can just like flip through all of these. There is no option within a database to view the next object in a database in Notion. So that's kind of my way around it. Like if I were an Emma, there is no button while I'm in this page to show me the plague, like whatever's next down the database. I wish that were an option, but right now it isn't in Notion. Um, so that's a little of my way around that. That's probably not scalable and I'm not gonna keep up with it, but for now it's there. So to go over how I'm connecting this to genres, first, let me put this back to bookshelf. I'll go up to the genres link. This is the database for genres. This is not the bookshelf database. This is a separate database. And in each of these entries, I have a new genre. And it's all in alphabetical order. Let's look at fiction. And you'll see that there is a connection to books, which is connecting to that bookshelf database. Every time I go in and select a new genre, say I select fiction, the book will appear in this relation property. I also have a role up here that's configured to show me how many books I have. So I'm just finding books, title property, and then calculate count all. I have another relation within my genre database 
that is children genres. So genres within genres. In this case, historical fiction is a child of fiction. And I have all of my books in historical fiction here. And also there are two. And I'll see that parent genres are fiction and history, which also has a collection of books. And of course I give them all cover images. You'll see I've also made links to each of these genres. This is a bit of extra work I did because I had some time on my hands. Um, I went through and just by going at the at symbol on your keyboard and just searching like fiction, for instance, I can link to fiction here. And I'm just doing sort of a bi-colored grid, coloring the background gray every time I add a new genre. With all the genres I have so far, I'm probably not going to be adding a whole lot more, but I do like the way this looks. And like I said, I go into, for example, the bell jar, and I select all of its genres. So let's say it's nonfiction. I can just search for nonfiction and it will show up and I can click that. All right, so I think we're, we're done with the library. Let's move on. Coming back up here to the articles from the web. Like I said in the beginning, for all of the articles I'm yet to read. You'll see that the entire article is within the page. That's because I'm using an extension called Save to Notion. Also, I have a video on this. So let's go through an example of how this works. I have two different forms. So let's say I want to save this article here. What I'm going to do is after downloading Save to Notion extension, I'm going to go up to Notion Saver. I created two separate forms. One is articles from the web, and the other one is news articles from the web. Within this database, if I just click through, I have a, a couple different templates. So I can come over here to see my templates. I have a news template and an interesting template. So if something is just an interesting article, it will go through to this template, and if it is news, to this template. And really the only difference between the two is if you select news, the type will automatically choose news. And the two types here are just news and interesting. And also that emoji will appear as a newspaper if it's news. So what I'm doing in these two forms is one form, if I go to settings, it's going to articles from the web database, but it's also automating to template interesting. So everything within that template will apply, including the emoji and everything. Then I have save page content. So that's where you're getting the entire article within the body of the page. I also have the front image being the page image, the URL, the name of the page title is unlocked. So when I go to save, I can change that. The date being today. So when I saved it, the natural status here is gonna to be to consume. Um, because most likely I'm saving this to read later, but if I'm just reading it on the screen here and I want to still save it, I can go to done in the save box. I also have an option for a rating. So just in case I did read it on the web, I can give it a rating really quick and just send it off into that database. So saving this article, it's just an interesting article, not a news article. I'm gonna press articles from the web. The date of today will appear and the title, I'm just going to modify this a bit to just show the title, the status. Let's say I read it right here, so done. And then I give it a quick rating, let's say 90%. Then when I go to save to Notion, it should appear. So I actually have this article in here. The first thing that should happen is that emoji should change. Also, it should auto-populate to interesting as the type, the rating should appear. I actually gave it 100%, but that 90 would appear in the example I just showed, and the URL to the article, and of course the date as well. So how I'm getting this publication, this is the name of the publication, really all I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the URL and I'm saying, forget all of this here, the HTTPS to www and also forget everything after the dot here. So the dot before dot org or dot com or whatever. So get rid of all of these and just show me what's in between, which is 
the name of the publication or the website. And I'm using a formula to do that and I'm mostly using the replace function. So if you just wanna take a look at that really quick, that's how I'm doing it. I'm finding the characters between two other special characters, essentially. And of course, I'm adding that little emoji in the beginning, that thread emoji, and that's all automatic. So whenever I save this article, it will automatically grab that URL in this formula and show me the publication name. And the page content is saved with all of its images as well. And that's pretty much how that works. So if I press to consume, instead, it will show up as to consume. Also, the rating will be empty, of course, because I haven't read it yet. And at the very top, it will populate within articles from the past week. Actually, this should be not named to this. I'm sorry about that. So articles to consume, actually. Originally, I had it as articles from the past week. Now, going through some of these database views, you'll see that I have three. I have one database view that is for all, all of the articles. So all the articles that I've already read that are not to consume, that are done. And I believe I am filtering this as just status is done and I'm sorting it as date descending. So the date closest to right now at the top and further away at the bottom. I'm also sorting status descending, which I actually don't have to do. So I can delete that. <laughs> I also have another database view for this month. So this is all the articles I've read, including the ones I need to consume from the past month and I'm in gallery view here. So what I am doing for this filter is simply just going date is within the past month. And I am sorting as date descending again. Okay, so moving on, let's look at the last bit I have, which is where I'm going in and just working on my book draft. So this is a bit of a work in progress, but so far I have everything from my book I'm writing, draft two, I'm going in to write draft three. I might do it in Notion, I might not. Basically what I'm using Notion for is to annotate my second draft and sort of break it down into little, little bits so I can understand what parts to get rid of mostly. So each row, instead of just being each chapter, I'm even breaking down those chapters into smaller and smaller bits. I'm thinking of doing a video on this once I get a better feel of how I'm using it and once I start annotating properly. So really quickly, let me show you how this looks. A link to my edit database and I'm just clicking through everything. I'm saying, is this logical? Did I extract we? I use the word we way too much. Did I delete sections? Also, did I pose any questions? So cues posed and is my voice okay? Um, so is the style okay? And then coming down at the bottom of the page, like I did before, I'm kind of linking to the next database entry going down so I can easily navigate through each part of this book just by scrolling down to the end of the page. And I can just keep navigating and going through. This is really nice if I wanna go and write my draft three and easily navigate without going back to the database. I can see the progress of it here in this roll up. It looks like I'm 60% happy in terms of editing with this first section. However, I'm not happy with the voice or questions posed. That's what this is showing. This is showing what is not checked. So if I go in here, you'll see voice and cues posed is not checked. And that's just using a formula. So this is the main database for edit to do. I also rename this to edit book to do. And that is this formula here. I'm not going to go through all that, but if you're interested in this sort of what's left to do uh, progress, I'd be glad to make a video on it if you want. You can see in my word count column, I also have a sum of all words and that's just going down to calculate in each column. You can do this and just find the sum. Also, if you're curious about how I'm finding the word count, it's a bit of a, it, it's a bit annoying. It's not automatic. What you're gonna have to do is go up to the um, three dots in the top right hand corner it might be cut off in my recording and going all the way down to the bottom, you'll see word count. And I just plug that in manually. At the bottom, I have a link for troubleshoot. This is where I just throw all of my pages in when I go to help people from discord or I help people from my email. 
Um, I'll just throw pages in here that are public for them to see. It's a bit of a miscellaneous page. And that's pretty much the end of this entire Capture and Collect HQ. There are some links up here I didn't go through, like Remnote and Roam. I can link to them. For instance, if I click on Remnote Timelines, it will send me within the browser to that page. Then I click right through to my notes. This is really good to use Notion as this home base, this HQ, for links even to other programs. This is actually a video I'm going to do next week. If you're curious, if you are a RemNote user, I'm gonna go through and show you how to create timelines easily from your notes if you use a lot of years. That's gonna be a lot of fun to work on. I still have to sort of polish the edges on that, but look forward to that. Like I said at the beginning of this video, a lot of what I just showed you, I have individual videos on on my channel that go more into depth on things like that progress bar and connecting databases. So I'll leave a bunch of links down below. With that being said, this was a long one. I'm sorry if you don't like longer videos. The next one will probably be about RemNote and those timelines because I'm kind of excited about those. I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and have a good one.